I seem to jump every time I hear a noise. Well, I don't blame you. What with everything you've been through. I'll get over it. Is that better, huh? Is it a lot better? A little better. All of the above, none of the above. Brad, I'm not in the mood to joke. I guess not. Come on, sit down. How are you doing? Did you rest? No. Well, dummy, that's what you stayed home from the hospital for. Yes, I know. Hey, are you all right? I mean, they didn't hurt you, those people. No, I'm fine. I'm not up to taking care of patients just yet, but I, I will be soon. Well, a good hot lunch will help you. I got out of the health club for a few minutes, and voila, or however you say voila in Chinese. Hey, come on, come and sit down. Your hot and sour soup will get cold. Brad, I appreciate what you're trying to do. I'm not hungry. Well, you better get hungry then. I can't. Brad, we have to straighten out some things. When I was being held hostage, I, I thought I was going to die. I did a lot of thinking, Brad. I thought about us, and, and I promised myself that I'd try to make our lives better. But I, I can't do it by myself. Brad, you have to talk to me. You have to tell me things. You have to tell me exactly what's been going on since we've been married. And I mean exactly. <laughs>
day we were supposed to be married. When Lana died. You changed somehow. And I've been trying to find out why. I've been trying to find out why you started drinking and, and why you hit me. And all I ever get from you is silence. And I can't forget that. I have to know why. Look, Jenny, I came home to have lunch with you. And what I'm getting here is a character analysis. I don't need it, all right? So you just enjoy your food. Brad. I'll still be here when you come back. I'll still have the same questions. Come on, Jenny. Look, can't you find one happy moment? I mean, can't you think of one happy moment in our marriage that we could share and use to build on for the future? No, Brad, we cannot be happy until you level with me. Are you, are you sure, Dorian? I'm absolutely sure. Oh, yes, it's going to be glorious. Now, you can invite as many friends as you'd like. And I'll find a, a very good chamber choir to perform the music. I think Peter would love that. Uh, but uh, why uh, the sudden generosity? I mean, why are you sudden, suddenly offering me land fare for my wedding reception? And, and why all these elaborate plans? Well, I would like it to be a symbol between us. <sighs> well, I don't follow that. Considering all that we've been through, I think the offering of my home for your wedding celebration would be a symbol as to say, well, the past is the past. And now this would be a symbol that you and I are once more family. Oh, I see. Kind of like a bridge between uh, two women that love the same man. Well, Linda, listen. I know that you and Peter love each other completely, and, and I have been able to forget my feelings for him. It wasn't easy. It really wasn't. But I have done that. Otherwise, how could I offer you my home and, or, or watch you marry him? No, it's true. I want you and, and Peter to have land there for your reception. I give it to you with all my blessings, darling. All right. <laughs> that's wonderful, then. That's settled. All right, let's make some plans. Um, let's see. I, I think August 1st could be a wonderful date. Mm. The roses are in bloom. We could have a whole house filled with roses. Oh, sounds great. No, maybe we could have it in the garden if you'd rather. Well, uh, what if it rains? It's not going to rain. We're not going to let it rain. <laughs> oh, Linda, I'm so happy. I really am. I'm also very relieved. There was a time not too long ago when I was afraid that you and I would never talk to each other again. Aren't you glad that's over with? I suppose. I have to be honest. I... I think a lot about our last fight. Well, I certainly have, too. You didn't mean all those things, did you, Melinda? I mean, you didn't really mean to hurt me, did you? Come on, sweetheart, can't you see? I'm, I'm trying so hard to make up to you. You could take back some of the things that you said, couldn't you? Like how you hated me, how, how you always hated me. Melinda, we are family, and surely you love me as much as I love you. <laughs> oh, Dorian. Just because you bribe me with a, a wedding reception at Land Fair doesn't mean that I suddenly love you. Wrong. Nothing has changed. And I don't take back one word of what I said. Not a word. <laughs> Trying to keep you an infant, too, huh? Well, it just sounds a little bit like that, yes. Well, listen, do you know why us older people try to keep you younger than you really, you really are? Why, because you don't want us to have any fun, right? No, no, because we won't feel so old. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> oh, Sam, Sam, I really do miss you and your family. How's, your, how's Brad doing? Brad writes, uh, he's 
fine. Well, you don't sound so positive about it. Well, um, I guess he's just getting adjusted to being a married man. Oh, oh yeah, well, that Brad. <laughs> Sadie, you know, uh, you're not keeping your part of the deal. I mean, I, I never get to see you here since you've been working at the hospital. Hey, why don't you ask me how's my schoolwork? How's your schoolwork? It's great, for one. Uh, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> you know, since you insist on being such a woman, I mean, I thought maybe I was supposed to ask you a down-with-it question like, uh, hey, how's your love life? Hey, I wish I had some with-it answers, but I, I don't. Not doing so well, huh? Uh, not doing very well at all. Oh, you know, I'm very sorry to see you unhappy. I really am. As a matter of fact, Sam, I'm kind of sorry to see anybody unhappy. Tired of the same old hospital menu? Well, yeah, maybe. Hey, you remember a few years ago we used to surprise each other with the uh, luncheon of the week? <laughs> yeah, sure. One week it'd be Mandarin, next week it'd be Greek. Yeah, French. That was kind of fun. Yeah. Took a lot of energy, though. Yeah, I did. Well... Maybe we're better off with the same old cafeteria routine after all. Maybe, at least we know what we're going to get. <laughs> Hello, folks. Hi, Jack. Dr. Scott, why don't you sit down and give us your opinion? My opinion? Yes, how would you rate the luncheon in the cafeteria? Uh, the food here? Well, it's top notch. Superior. High on the hog. Oh, come on. That is a good like starvation diet. <laughs> well, it took some doing. Becky thinks the best thing is to get herself into jail. I managed to talk her into keeping quiet for, for a week or so, at least. Give me a chance to look into this thing. Sweetheart, legally speaking, aren't you withholding information from the police? After all, she's confessed. She even gave you details. Not necessarily. The, uh, you know, I have to agree with Abbott. There's something missing in her story. I have one week to prove it. Well, it is not an easy job you've taken on. Hello. Oh, Vicky, thank God you're home. It's Irene Clayton. Irene! Who are you? Well, I just flew in from New York. I'm Vicky. I must speak with you immediately. Please, may I come over? Uh, yes, uh, Joe and I were just having lunch, and then I'm going to go out and do some shopping later on. Oh, Vicky, please, please let me come right over now. It's absolutely urgent. Well, since you've always felt competitive with me, then I, I must assume that Peter is part of this competition. Do you know something, Dorian? I think for the first time in our lives, we are going to have a wonderful talk. <laughs> Tell me, Melinda, did you become interested in Peter when you found out that I was interested in him? Well, I admit that when I first saw him, I thought he was uh, rather ordinary. That is, until I found out that you were interested in him. So then you're marrying him, not because you love him, but because you took him away from me. <laughs> this is such fun, I mean, to actually hear you say that I have taken something from you that matters. Well, since you're having such a good time, why don't you just come right out and admit that you deliberately hit my life? <sighs> oh, gosh, I'll tell you. I've seen you lying there on the floor, moaning and groaning that I had practically killed you. <gasps> Were you sorry that you had? Well, I must say that I was absolutely delighted that you fell. But I was uh, rather upset that you didn't really hurt yourself. Well, I can't believe this. I mean... Didn't you feel ashamed or, or, or at least feel some pity or, or at that moment some, well, feel sorry for what you had done? I'll tell you, the only thing that I felt sorry for at that moment was the horse. <laughs> but when 
you hit my horse. You, you had no idea what was going to happen. I mean, if I would be able to stay in the saddle or, or if I fall. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Do you mean that you really are capable of, of murdering your own sister? Oh, oh, let's face it, Dorian. You had it coming to you since you, you were in pigtails. And you're not in love with Peter at all. Not at all. You're yeah. just doing all of this to hurt me. Well, he obviously couldn't have cared very much about you. I mean, he never even took a backwards glance. Tell him, Melinda, do you sit up nights planning all this? No, no, no. I just kind of use my instincts. I mean, anything really rotten and evil, I think I learned from you. <gasps> Thank you. 